The Mass is a real feast of the senses. As we know, it incorporates all our different senses, and we have different movements and sights and sounds and smells and tastes, and there's so much that's happening during the liturgy of the Eucharist. But sometimes, so, since there is so many of these things that are happening, it could be easy for us to be lost in it and to just kind of blank out and have that familiar, I'm sure you're all familiar with this, where your eyes glaze over and you just go on autopilot all the way to the end and then the final hymn comes and you wake up and go, oh, oh, it's over. Whoop. I just missed everything. And I think the, what, what really stood out to me when I was reading over some of the stuff from the germ was about something that I found that seems to be the glue that holds together our experience of the Mass and connects us to God. And this, this connecting to God is through silence. There's a part in the germ where it talks about sacred silence, and there's a whole little mini section on it talking about what silence is in the Mass and how the sacred silence plays out. And it's, it shows that it's not just about what is done during the Mass, but it's about all the little pauses. It's about what is not said that brings about something that brings about that connection to God, connects us more deeply to Him, and brings about something that we don't get simply by listening and participating in everything else. And what, what the, uh, pardon me, for example, if we look at, as I'm sure you all know the reference to Elijah, when Elijah was out you know, praying and he found that God was not in the wind, he was not in the earthquake, he was not in the fire, couldn't be found anywhere else, but he found God in the silence in that, in that still small voice. So I think this is, this is where there's really something to be said about what do we do with the silence and what are the different types of silence. And I say different types because this was something that surprised me a little. I hadn't thought about breaking down until I read over the germ. And what it talks about the sacred silence in the germ is it says that, I'll just, I'll just read here what it, what it says on this. For in the penitential act, and again after the invitation to pray, individuals recollect themselves. Whereas after reading or after a homily, all meditate briefly on what they have heard. And then after communion, they praise God in their hearts and pray to Him. So it separates the sacred silence into three different types, which I think all point to how it is that we can connect to God more intimately through the pauses of the Mass. So first of all, when we look at recollecting ourselves, this is in, as Peter was talking about, the penitential rite, during the pen, uh, before the penitential rite, and as well, all the different times when the priest says, let us pray. There is this pause that is supposed to take place in which we actually stop and recollect ourselves. This allows us to make ourselves available to God. To actually stop, and you know, as I'm sure you've all experienced when you pray, we have to stop for a moment and go, okay, all right, become aware of God, what I'm doing, all right, and okay, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna listen, now I'm gonna be ready. And we have to take that moment to recollect ourselves because without that silence, we can easily, well, we, we, we can't really gather our bearings. We get lost in all of the noise and everything else that we need to just stop and recollect, and otherwise what happens is the entire mass can just slip through our fingers and we lose it all. So this first type, recollecting ourselves, is this first way in which we connect ourselves to God, or become connected to God. Second of all, is meditation on what we have heard. So this happens during the, or before and after the readings and before and after the homily, we have these pauses here, which are intended to uh, absorb, allow us to absorb everything that we've taken in. So we've, we're already attentive, 
but now there's so much that's being delivered to us, there's so much of hearing God's word and everything that's taking place that now we have to actually stop and allow it to penetrate us. If we imagine it like delivering a package, if the Mass is this big gift that is being given to us, everything that we see and that we hear, everything that takes place is this big gift of God being delivered to us. First, we have to open the doors. Obviously, we have to be ready to receive this package, and so that's that first type of silence, making ourselves ready so that we may connect with God. So we open up the doors, and then in comes the truck, and the truck backs up, and it's going, you know, beep, 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 you know, three times, because the Trinity, right, get it. Uh, and once the truck has backed up, we then have to receive the package. And it's a really big package, so we need to also take some time with it to actually bring it into our home, to bring it into our hearts, which I think is something just as a little bit of a side note to keep in mind when we're leading liturgy uh, in our own parishes, hopefully someday, that to, give, to, not, to not rush those moments, to give enough time in those moments so that people can adequately receive everything that's just taken place. And then, of course, once we've meditated on the Word, then we come to the third part, which is the package is in the house, but now we have to open the package and enjoy it. It's the whole point of receiving the package. We don't just get a package so we can say, hey, you know, job done, move on. We have to actually spend time there with the gift that God has given us. And this is this third type that the germ speaks about of silent praise and prayer. And this occurs after communion. That most fittingly, once we have received our Lord, now we can actually pause and have that silence that's actually prescribed in there so that we can listen to the Lord and just be with Him. It's just enjoying the fruits of who God is and that He is with us, that He has come to us. And you all know what I'm speaking about. I mean, you all have had those experiences that those joys and that that closeness with God is something that cannot be described in words. And so, really, it's, it's most fitting that this is a period of silence, because words cannot describe what is happening, and so we need to just be with Him. So that's why those moments are all so important. And I think also as well, when we look at the liturgy, and we've talked about this in, in some of our classes a little bit, that the liturgy really helps inform our lives. So what takes place in the Mass on one scale ends up on a smaller scale in our hearts in our everyday life playing out. And this is where I think we can really learn something from the sacred silence in the Mass in how we are to connect with God. And I'm not speaking about uh, the times that we set aside for contemplation and prayer, which I'm sure, you know, everyone is doing. And that's, that's one thing. I think it can say something about that too. But what I want to speak about is the, the kind of the spontaneous times, the times throughout our day. Because the Mass, just as the Mass has silence kind of spattered throughout the Mass, there's all kinds of different times during the Mass where silence all of a sudden comes in. That in our lives, there's also these we need to kind of intersperse silence throughout our day. It's not just about one reserved time that this is when I will be silent and then the rest of the day I'm off doing things. But I think we can learn something from having these pauses of silence throughout our day. So for example, in the first form of silence, to pause and recollect that we might stop every now and then and just remind ourselves, refresh ourselves periodically throughout the day that, okay, you know, what am I, who am I living for? Who's, you know, where's God in my life? And just have that listening ear so that we're attentive and ready to hear Him. And then once we have that attentiveness throughout our day, we'll also then we'll start to hear what God is speaking. And the more that we hear what God is speaking, then we can move on to the second form of silence which is then to pause and allow it to sink in and meditate upon it. So if we hear God's 
we notice something that God is saying or we hear something said that reminds us of what God is speaking to us in our lives, we can pause and, and you know, not just let it pass by us, but actually let it sink in. And then third of all, if God is really touching us, to not run away from those moments and be like, well, I have to get back to work, but then to go to the third form of silence and actually let God be with us in our hearts. And I think that's, that's, a, that's something I need to remind myself, as, as, myself of as well, is to take those extra moments when God is speaking to me to stop and say, you know what, maybe the Lord right now just wants me to rest with Him. And it doesn't have to be an organized, formal time, but spontaneously right now the Lord is speaking to me, so hey, I guess that's what's happening. That's sort of an obedience to the moment. So do not forget about the silence. We just need to keep that in mind, to have that silence with us throughout our everyday lives, because it's by this silence that we continue to connect to God, and we continue to have these many connections with Him, both in the liturgy and in our lives. And we have something that we can really learn from this silence.